Very good. Thank you for adding that in there, Frank. I appreciate that. I think uh, that will help uh, on that. Uh, we've got someone on the phone line, Green Eye Guy. Let me unmute and yeah. uh, get your question. Hi. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Good day, Frank. Terry Lynn. This is Aaron in Idaho. Uh, first, Hi. thanks for an inspirational call tonight. And uh, in regard to the opening three prayers, the Our Father, the Lord is my shepherd, and Hail Mary. Is it possible that the Roman cult claims to be the spirit incarnate of Mary or Jesus or God and using that as their administrative authority? The reason why I ask this is because I recall listening to a private chat in which it was brought up that there is someone within their system who actually claims to be Satan incarnate. Yes. <laughs> we didn't get onto that. I, I couldn't, because we went on the prayer, I didn't want to go back into the the, the bad old Roman cult, but certainly you've asked it, yes. Apparently there is no less than probably 12 to 14, at least at the highest, highest level in their system, that absolutely believe they and they alone are the uh, Satan, Sabaoth, Lucifer incarnate. And it wouldn't surprise me because these people have extraordinary egos. This is the dumbest generation of the New World Order in history. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me because all the signs are the inmates are still running the asylum. They, 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 haven't, stopped keep, you know, they haven't stopped their plans. So in that sense, yes, they consider themselves darkness, but would they consider themselves the embodiment of those prayers? No. No, that's, that's not the case. And there's no evidence that the church or any authority openly claims to be powerful enough to usurp those prayers. It's just in the action of the court. So the, probably the closest evidence is, in fact, the judges. The judges are the ones that through... I mean, judges now are, are really the stupidest people in law that have probably ever been on this planet in history of civilization. They are almost recruiting people who are exhibiting the characteristics of, of arrogant stupidity to the role. They really are wanting, that's what they want, arrogant stupidity. High, high intelligence, but arrogant stupidity, which is, I know it sounds a bit contradictory. So no, the prayers stand alone and those prayers are clear that Ecclesiastically, they don't have a leg to stand on. Thanks. Very right. good. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Aaron. All right, next on the uh, chat line here. We've got several folks on chat asking some questions here, Frank. Uh, is there a plan in place to inform the rest of the world about Eucadia? And we haven't really talked about this or explained to us where they can see that information. So will you touch on that just a little bit? Um, no, there's not a plan. There's not a plan. And, and, and the reason there's not a plan is that if UKD was was rolled out like one would roll out a campaign to sell soap powder, say, and I know that the question is not saying that, but if one was to promote a product and sell a product, then ultimately the product is going to be connected to me at this point until I step down and just become like everyone else. And so it becomes, and there's no way to avoid it, it becomes ultimately what people would view as, as a kind of another cult. And that's not the intention of Eucadia. Look, it may seem loose, and I know that people... In, in the world of commerce and, and marketing, you know, books like The Secret became successful because it was marketed. Uh, Dan Brown's books succeeded, even though the material was almost, in, in many cases, literally lifted from, from other people's work over years, worked because they marketed it. So, yeah, I mean, marketing can have a profound impact on this message and one could argue that it's unfair if, if it isn't marketed because then people won't have the chance to read but if Eucadia has value and if the people 
that choose to be part of it are prepared to stand up and be competent, then it's really up to you to decide how to promote and market UK, not really up to me. Now, that's not a cop-out from me. That's just saying viral marketing, word of mouth, credibility, honesty, the system we're dealing with was built over hundreds and hundreds of years. And if you take the model of Christianity, how many were there at the beginning? Well, I mean, a bit over a couple of handfuls. Not a lot. It certainly wasn't a marketing campaign. I don't think if you read the stories, it wasn't that Christianity was uh, started with a marketing campaign. So I, I, I really defer to those that are coming on now, those that will come on, for you to decide how best to express and share rather than me. And in that process, I hope it doesn't become the uh, cult of Frank, uh, the promotion of uh, soap, uh, that, that it, and also that it grows as a model and that we correct things and fix things. So is there a plan? No. Is there a plan to, to get a plan up? No, there's not. Could you uh, explain a little bit about the process that was done? Uh, how, how long ago was that? Uh, 2009, Frank, that actually did notify some of the powers that be? Yeah, look, there is a... <clears throat> while, while there isn't the marketing uh, uh, plan, there is a formal plan of divine notorial procedure that is in place. And it's been followed and it's been executed uh, as it should be. And it began on December the 21st, 2009 with a series of, of letters that were faxed to key groups around the world, giving notice of the covenant and the change. Now, one could argue that uh, unless they've written back and said, thank you, I've received it, unless it's perfected, that uh, it doesn't mean anything. I think we've, we've learnt now enough, and sorry, the rain, uh, we have tin roofs here, so if you're hearing this noise, there's a lot of rain happening at the moment. But in their system, it doesn't matter whether you have got 50 people witnessing, if they don't want to follow the law, then all the notorial procedures in the world are not going to help. So we've published the notices. They're on the front of One Heaven. They're the first uh, notices of divine agreement understanding. Last year, December 21st, 2010, we issued the notices of divine protest. They were deeds, divine protest. And this December 21st, 2011 will be the day of divine judgment. The day that a default judgment is issued before I step down against all the major groups that have failed and remain in dishonour. Now in that process, a number of things will take place. Uh, it will be uh, effectively the ending of any legal theological, philosophical authority in the existing system that can claim their trusts, their curses, their property, their money is intact. It will be the end. Now, it may be 10 years before people know that this process took place perfectly. It might be 20 years, might be 50 years. But the process is happening and it can't be stopped. Very good. Thank you, Frank, for expanding on that. All right, we'll go to Ron on the phone lines. Ron, are you there? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Hi, Ron. Good. 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 Hey, Frank, um, getting back to the birth certificate issue, have you considered a, a way to declare the, the straw man dead so that we can probate his estate and we become the executor? Look, that, that actually has been tried. Yeah. And there's been no success. 
Uh, and, I, and, I, and the way I would the way I would explain it is that the Sesta KV Trust, the Trinity of Sesta KV Trust, are underwritten on the private side by the sacrament of baptismo. And the public side not only will not shift but cannot shift because in their system they claim that baptism of an infant is a permanent and irrevocable act. It cannot be undone. And as a consequence, on the public side, they cannot relinquish the existence of the Sesta KVs. They might change Sesta KVs, they might drop one and start one, but the fact that it's Sesta KV must exist for your name, your body and your spirit has been in place since the 16th century and they will not yield. Now it's unlawful, it's immoral, it's evil and it, it is in fact flawed because it's founded in fraud, fraudism, it's done on an infant without reason, it breaks every rule in the book in terms of law but they will not yield one inch. Is that because um, they would have to unwind all of the financial instruments that are written against the uh, Sista KV Trust? Well, what do you think it means if their whole system is founded on the very worst and, and awful and stupid fraud possible, which is an infant agreeing to being a slave for eternity? Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's unsustainable, isn't it? So if the foundation is, is fraud, then what happens to everything above it? It all crumbles. It so what can't, they do, what can't they do then? Oh, they can't write the bonds and keep the thing moving. That's right. So uh, because their system's based on fraud, when you really get down to it, they, they won't yield. And all this argument that fraud negates it and all that, that's all the stuff they tell us. So when we function, you know, we give an oath, then we can't break it. We can't commit fraud. But their whole system is predicated on fraud. And, mm. and, and the rule is they will not yield one inch. One inch on collapsing those Sesta KVs. And, if, and also what's happened is thank, thanks to all those that are on the call, all that will listen to the call, all those that have uh, performed an uh, ecclesiastical deed, thanks to that, we have now the largest proof in history of their fraud. Proof that the rules that they set mean nothing. They do not follow them. They do not believe them. They do not have any application in their system. Their system is a fraud, complete and utter fraud, a lie. Well, then... How do we counter the fraud? How do we? How do we as we consume it, Ron? We Pardon? consume it. We consume it. Okay. So to consume it, we need what do we need to consume? And this is the hard part. We need okay. a big, um, <laughs> right? We need a bigger stick. No, 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 no. Sticks. No, Ron. In Ron, is uh, life a dream? Oh, life's a, a dream. Okay, so if life is a dream, what's the most powerful thing you can have if it's a dream? A big dream. A bigger dream. A big dream, dream. yeah, an idea. An idea, an idea. being a dream. You're right, okay. So what is your idea? It's a kingdom of what? A kingdom of dreams. Kingdom of dreams, that's exactly right. So we already have everything we need. We've just got to finish it. So what are we going to finish? We've got to finish the, the 22 books of canon law. Why? because that will be the most perfect set of maxims and knowledge and reason of law ever brought forward. It must be that. It has to be that. And it will be that. So that becomes the bedrock of law. When people say, oh, oh this is a maxim, hey, if it's not a canon, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't apply. So that's going to be key. The covenant is key. The covenant, yes? Yes, it is. Then the charters, the globe union, all the different unions, 
then down to the universities, being the national societies. 